Welcome back friends, thanks for being here. Fasten your seatbelts and subscribe because it's going to be fun. This video is going to be all about backing up your draws workstation. This will also work for just about any Raspberry Pi or Linux system as well. With Linux kernel updates, software configurations, QSO logs, and updates from Northwest Digital Radio happening all the time, it would be good to know you could get back to work if something didn't go right with the backup. I'm going to show you an easy way and a hard way. What you're going to need is your working draws or Pi, a USB SD card reader, and an SD card. I've got links to what I've used down in the description. Don't worry about taking notes or anything because I'll have all of the command lines that you need to run down in the description. So I'm just going to do a quick one run through and show you how it's done. And let's get rolling. First, the hard way from the command line. If your SD card is formatted, when you stick it into your Pi, it will auto mount. So look for it with df-h. And right here you can see that I have my primary SD card. It's got 24 gig available and 5 gig used. This is a 32 gig SD card. Uh, you can also see that I have this dev SDA1, uh, which is set up as a just a temporary throwaway partition just to show you that it's there. And we're going to go ahead and get some new partitions created on that now that we know what it is and uh, start doing some backups. Another way you can find it if it doesn't auto mount because you haven't formatted it before or it's not a recognized file system is you can do lsblk for list block devices. And again, that'll show that I've got the MMC BLK0, which is the SD card reader built into the Raspberry Pi. And then SDA1 is what my um, USB SD card reader shows up as. So first thing we need to do is become root because we're going to do a lot of stuff. sudo -i, i for do an interactive shell. And we're going to do part ed slash dev slash SDA. And if you want to take a look here to see what the partition table is, just to double check, it'll show that I've got a 15 gig, 15.9 gig, 16 gig partition on this device and drop me back at a prompt. So the first thing I'm going to do is make label MS-DOS. And what this is going to do is it's going to create an empty MS-DOS style partition on the external SD card. Oh, it's telling me it's in use, which is a good thing. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to quit. I'm going to umount slash dev slash SDA1. And we're going to go back in and do it again. Part dead slash dev slash SDA. Print. Hey, look, it's still there. Now we're going to make label MS-DOS. Yes, I want to make a label just like I asked you to. And it's just like that, it's done. And there's nothing there. So standard Raspberry Pi system has a slash partition, which is ext4, and a slash boot partition, which is readable by Mac OS computers or uh, PC compatible computers running Windows or whatever, or other Linux machines, obviously. Um, so we're gonna make the boot partition first by make part, it's gonna be a primary partition. It's gonna be a FAT16 type. FAT for file allocation table, it's not just calling it names. It's going to start at the beginning of the drive and it's going to go for 64 megs. And that one's done. We're going to make a partition in the primary partition table again. And this time it's going to be ext4 for the slash partition. And it's going to start at the 64 meg boundary where we left off last time. And we're going to tell it to use the whole rest of the disk, dash 1s. Now we take a look at that and you can see that I've got a 64 meg partition here. And I've got another partition that starts at 64 megs and is 15.9 gigs. Okay, let's drop out of part ed, which will write all the information to disk, and then let's uh, make file systems. So the first file system we need to make is the VFAT file system on dev sda1. This is basically the equivalent of the old DOS format command. And as it's come up through the ranks, MKFS is make file system. So in the Linux world, no real response equals success. If something went wrong here, it would give you an error message, but you're not gonna get a pat on the back just for doing the thing that you asked it to do. So our second partition is gonna be an ext4 system, make fs ext4. We're gonna put a journal on it, and it's gonna be dev sda2. This one's a bigger partition. There's a lot more stuff going on. Um, ext4 partitions support journaling, which is what the dash j is. That helps you recover data in the event of quick power outage or something like that. Before ext4 was um, ext3 and ext2, obviously ext2, when you would inadvertently power off your machine and power it back on, you had to run a file system check or it wouldn't mount up and it kind of just sat there and didn't survive a power outage, which was really bad for a remote server 
So we've got the uh, ext4 file system created and you'll get a little more info like I said, but you're not going to get a pat on the back for this one either. It's just done. So next thing we're going to do is create a scratch workspace to copy the files to. We're going to put that in the temp folder. Make dir slash temp slash draws backup. And then we're going to mount the slash partition that we just created. Slash dev slash sda2 into slash temp slash draws bk. And we're going to make a directory and slash temp slash draws bk for the mount point for boot. And we're going to mount dev sda1 in slash temp slash boot. Now, oops, slash temp slash draws bk slash boot. Now that I've gotten a whole screen full of commands on the screen, you're probably wondering why we're doing all this difficult stuff when there's so many other ways to do it. Realistically, there are a lot of other ways to do it. We're gonna show you one other really easy way to do it. Um, this is just something I wanted to do on the Raspberry Pi itself. It's a full-fledged computer. Why don't we use it to make its own backups? There's also other ways where you can make non-bootable clone copies of your backups, uh, but I figured that having an SD card backup that you could put in the machine and start up and get on the air and get back to work would have been a lot better than trying to go through a complete install and then restoring your config and then configuring all your radios and everything and getting back on the air. So back at it, we've now got the partitions created. We've got them formatted. We've got them mounted. Let's see what it looks like. So you can see that I've still got my original 32 gig SD card that we booted off of. And now I've got the 16 gig SD card in the backup slot, and I've got a 64 meg, 60 meg boot partition. The numbers are going to change a little bit as long as they're close enough. It's fine for what we're doing. Um, one of the things that you might notice here is that the SD cards are not the same size. So it's a 30 gig, 32 gig SD card that I have booted from, and it's a 16 gig SD card that I'm backing up to. So I've only used five gig worth of data, so that'll certainly fit in the 14 gigs of available space. So don't feel like you have to have identical SD cards or anything like that. This is really just a backup. If you wanted to get your 32 gig workspace back, you could easily boot from this, repeat this entire process, restoring to your 32 gig card, and then you'd have all that free space back. So again, just a backup, just some disaster recovery type stuff. Change into the temp draws back folder. And you'll see this is empty except for the boot folder that we created and a Linux file system standard called lost and found. And that's where stuff goes when you do a file system check or something crashes. So this is empty. Let's start copying stuff to it. We're gonna run the rsync command. Um, rsync is like a copy on steroids. It does a whole lot of stuff. Um, but one of the cool things about it is if the file system support it, it will be able to tell whether or not it has actually copied the file already or not copied the file already. Check our spelling errors real quick and go over briefly what these different switches are. Uh, rsync is the command, dash A is to turn on archive mode. If you look in the man page for rsync, turning on archive mode adds a whole bunch of flags to what you're working on and uh, go there for more details on that. But basically it sets a whole bunch of stuff that would be really useful for creating an archive backup like we're doing. Uh, v is for verbose. Exclude was spelled wrong, let's spell that right. We're gonna exclude the temp folder. When the Raspberry Pi is running, it puts a lot of stuff in temp, um, some stuff from the GUI, some stuff from what you might be working on inside of an application or something like that. All that stuff gets wiped out on reboot, so we really don't need to back it up. It'll just save us a little bit of time. This uh, dash dash one dash file dash system, one file system flag tells it to stay on a single file system. So you can see up here that there's slash and there's slash dev and there's slash dev slash shim and slash run and so on and so on down the line. All of these fall under slash. So when I'm telling it to back up slash, it would attempt to back up all the other stuff. And then we get in this little loop where it's trying to back up what it's already backed up and it's gonna get really ugly really fast. So telling it to stay on one file system will say, only this part is what I'm asking for, not this and everything underneath of it. I also wanna get the slash boot. And again, it's only going to stay on the slash boot file system, even though there isn't another file system underneath that. And we're going to back it up to slash temp slash draws BK, where we mounted our folders. So let's give that a run. And it's off to the races. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a pause here. We're going to come back when it's done. And we're going to do a little bit more things. So sit tight and you won't even notice that we're Okay, so all that data has copied. You can see it sent about five gigabytes of data, which is what we saw in the disk free report from earlier. And we can check real quick to see how that looks. So the original drive has 4.9 gigs in use. The new drive has 5.1 gigs. 
they're close. It's nothing to worry about. It's just due to the calculations and every, all the rounding and everything like that. If you really want to double check, you can run the rsync command again. These file systems do support the um, have I already copied this notion, so it should run pretty quickly. That's coming because the GUI is running. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that over. All right, that log file copied over a second time. You can see it's about 22K in size. It's a log file. Something's writing to it while we're uh, in the middle of working here, so it's going to keep changing, but it's fine. We really don't need to worry about the log file now. So one of the things that we do need to do is update the um, file system table and the command lines. Let's get into the file system table. Uh, C slash temp slash draws bk slash etsy and right now you can see that it's referencing the partition uh, UUIDs and we want to change that to reference the new partition UUIDs so ls dash al slash dev slash disk slash by part ID and we want to take the first portion of this because you'll notice that that part is the same on both volumes and then we want to change that in the fs tab file system table and then the next thing that we need to do is change the command line that linux boots from which is in the boot folder and you can tell that we're in the right location because of our prompt saying uh, temp draws bk boot we don't want to be in just slash boot we want to be in our copy and we'll do the same thing here we'll change that uuid to our new copy and using the UUIDs is pretty neat because you don't have to worry about the fact that, um, let me show it to you on the screen real quick. You don't have to worry about the fact that it's mounted in your USB SD card reader as SDA1 and SDA2, but then when you do all your switchovers, it'll actually be mounted in the Raspberry Pi's SD card reader as MMC BLK 0P1 P2. So let's go ahead and uh, shut this thing down. Pseudo is kind of redundant here, it's just a force of habit. And what I will do is I will shut it down I will swap over the SD cards. I'll boot it back up and uh, show you what it looks like. Remember that our old, um, our original, our source Raspberry Pi drive was a 32 gig SD card and our target backup drive was a 16 gig SD card. So you'll see that it's changed on the, on the reboot. All right, then we have rebooted. Let's go in and take a look. And you can see now that my root partition is a 15 gig volume. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down one more time. We're going to get it swapped back to the other configuration and I'm going to show you the easy way to do this. Okay, we are back again. Let's verify we've got the right disks in the right locations. So you can see that I'm back to booting off of the 32 gig SD card and I have my 16 gig SD card in my SD card reader. So this is going to be the GUI method of making this backup copy. The other way was cool so you know what's going on behind the scenes and you kind of get a feel for the Linux commands, uh, but there's nothing wrong with just doing the, the GUI commands, especially for something like this. It's a little tedious to do it at the command line. So if you go under the accessories menu, there's an SD card copier. <clears throat> Click on SD card copier, copy from device, MMC BLK0. Remember from before that that is your Raspberry Pi's SD card reader. Copy to device. It's the only thing left, so it's smart enough to tell you that. And make sure that you don't change this new partition UUIDs, so it will boot off of the drive without uh, any changes whatsoever. And then you click the Start button. It will erase all the content on generic storage device, am I sure? Yes, I am. And it starts copying. And it's basically going through all the same steps we went through before. It's wiping out the file system on the SD card in the external drive. It is creating an empty partition set. It's formatting those partitions and then it's gonna start copying. And first it copies the boot partition, so it takes a pretty short amount of time, and then it's gonna start copying the larger partition. And this is about five gigs worth of data, if you recall. It's gonna take a little bit of time. We're gonna pause here. We'll be back when it's done. And we are done. So let's uh, shut this thing down, swap the cards over, and take a look. All right, boot it onto the freshly copied SD card. And as you can see, we've got a file system size of 15 gigs. So there you have it. Two different ways of getting the same job done. So hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.
and I uh, hope you even found it useful. If you'd like to support my channel, see the description below for the tip jar and mailbag, and stay tuned for more videos.